The transfer portal has been going crazy since it opened up. Every day, it seems like there are hundreds of players who put their name into the portal. The last few days have been especially crazy as some really talented players have transferred to new programs. Today, we're going to be taking a look at some of the best players who have transferred recently. Before we get to today's video, make sure to smash that subscribe button and turn on those notifications if you're new to my channel. If you're watching this video, odds are that you love college football and odds are you aren't subscribed to my channel. So make sure to subscribe to one of the best college football communities here on YouTube. I'm posting college football videos every day during the off season, so make sure to subscribe so you never miss a video. Also, make sure to drop a like on this video as well. It helps out with that YouTube algorithm and helps share the video with more college football fans. Plus, it only takes a second to do. After having an incredible transfer class last offseason, USC is doing the same again this year. They just picked up a solid wide receiver in Dorian Singer, who spent the last couple of seasons with Arizona. This is actually a trend for former Wildcat players, as Singer is the third Arizona player to transfer to USC over the past week. As of right now, Dorian Singer is the highest rated prospect in USC's 2023 transfer class. He's considered the number 14 overall prospect and the number 4 receiver receiver by 24-7 sports. Singer really emerged as one of the top wide receivers in the entire Pac-12 in 2022. He caught 66 passes for over 1,100 yards with 6 receiving touchdowns. His receiving yards led the conference, and he was 6th in the Pac-12 in receptions. Singer was named to the AP's first team All-Pac-12 team. It makes sense as to why USC picked him up, that way they can avoid playing him moving forward. This season, when the Trojans faced Arizona, Singer caught 7 passes for 141 yards with 3 receiving touchdowns. USC's wide receiver room next season is looking pretty damn good, and they somehow found a way to make it even better. Nebraska picked up their starting quarterback for next season, as they were able to add former Georgia Tech quarterback Jeff Sims. Injuries really impacted Sims' 2022 season, as he appeared in only 7 games. Overall, he threw for 1,100 yards with 5 touchdowns and only 3 interceptions. He also added 300 yards on the ground with a rushing score. Overall though, Sims had a pretty productive career while with Georgia Tech. He threw for 4,400 yards with 30 passing touchdowns in 25 games. He also rushed for 1,100 yards with 11 rushing touchdowns during that span as well. Obviously, Nebraska still has a quarterback battle with Casey Thompson, but there are a lot of people that expect Sims to be the guy moving forward. Mike Schaefer, who covers Nebraska for 24-7 sports, said Jeff Sims could have a Bo Nix-like transition with a fresh start in Nebraska under new head coach Matt Rule. Andrew Ivins, who's the 24-7 sports director of scouting, had some pretty high praise for Sims. He's a guy I'm not writing off. He's a guy that can win games at a high level. He's someone that can elevate his play. And he's a streaky player. Talking with people inside his camp, he just wanted a fresh start. He's going to get that at Nebraska. We've seen quarterbacks in recent years find success. Look at Bo Nix at Oregon. He's kind of a castaway, and he found the right system. He was given a chance and excelled. That's the goal or vision. TCU made a splash in the portal as they picked up former Alabama wide receiver JoJo Earl. After missing the first month of the season due to a fractured foot, he returned to game action against Arkansas on October 1st. Overall, his numbers were pretty underwhelming for the season. He caught 12 passes for 155 yards with two receiving touchdowns. As a true freshman in 2021, he caught 12 passes for 150 yards. There was a lot of hype surrounding Earl when he committed to Alabama, as he was considered to be one of the top wide receiver recruits in the entire country. But in his two seasons with the tie, he just hasn't lived up to expectations. My Arizona State Sun Devils picked up a quarterback as they landed former Notre Dame quarterback Drew Pine. According to ESPN, Pine visited ASU over the weekend and really clicked with Kenny Dillingham. According to the article, Pine appreciated Dillingham's work in developing Bo Nix at Oregon last season and was attracted to the program's new energy and playing for a quarterback friendly coach. Pine started 10 games in Notre Dame this past season as the Irish went 8 and 2 in those starts. He also went 4 and 1 against top 25 teams. Overall, Pine completed 65% of his passes for 2,000 yards with 22 passing touchdowns and 6 interceptions. According to the ESPN article, Drew Pine impressed the Arizona State staff with his productivity in a pro style system that's generally conservative and lack dynamic weapons. Pine showed toughness in both his ability to create plays and take hits. 
While Pine isn't physically imposing, he showed the ability to stay healthy and absorb hits without getting injured. Well, with Jeff Sims heading to Nebraska, former Texas A&M quarterback Haynes King is transferring to Georgia Tech. King threw for over 1,100 yards this season with seven passing touchdowns and six interceptions in six games. He began the season as the starting quarterback, but battled numerous injuries. Coming out of high school, King was a four-star recruit and was the number seven dual threat quarterback in the nation. He began the 2021 season as the starting quarterback, but he broke a bone in his leg early in the season and he missed the remainder of the year. It's been a disappointing start to his collegiate career as King has only appeared in 10 games over the last three seasons, but maybe he'll be able to thrive in a brand new program. We talked about Arizona losing a couple players earlier in the video, but they were able to pick one up in the transfer portal as well. They landed one of the top overall players in the transfer portal in former Oregon linebacker Justin Flo. Although he was ranked as the best linebacker of his recruiting class, Flo just hasn't met expectations while at Oregon. His first and second seasons were cut short after suffering numerous injuries. In his lone game in 2021, he recorded 14 tackles and had a game-saving force fumble against Fresno State. In 2022, Flo was projected to be a starter heading into the season, but saw limited snaps and missed some time due to injury. He finished the season with 35 tackles and 2.5 tackles for loss. Overall, in 12 games, he's racked up 50 tackles with 3.5 tackles for loss with a force fumble. Although he hasn't looked like the the number one linebacker from his recruiting class, there are still people that believe in his potential. It's not often you see a player go from Alabama to LSU, but that's what we have here with former Alabama wide receiver Aaron Anderson. Anderson actually is going to be returning home as he's from New Orleans. He was a top 40 prospect and was a five-star wide receiver considered by many to be one of the top wide receiver recruits of his entire class. In high school, he was actually committed to LSU for 10 months, but he backed off his pledge shortly after the midseason firing of Ed Orgeron. In the midst of the coaching change, he chose Alabama instead. Overall, Anderson was the number one player from Louisiana in the 2022 class. But after suffering an injury early in the season, Anderson barely saw the field and didn't record a single catch. With that being said, Anderson was considered a five-star wide receiver, so the talent is clearly there. With him going to LSU, the Tigers might have just gotten an insane weapon for the 2023 season. A year after signing with Washington, then going to Michigan State, wide receiver receiver Jeremy Bernard is back at Washington. Bernard initially signed with Washington last December, but decided he didn't want to go to Washington after wide receivers coach Junior Adams left for Oregon. Bernard then followed his high school quarterback to Michigan State, where he recorded only seven catches for 130 yards and two touchdowns this season. By going to Washington, Bernard is going to be able to play with one of the best quarterbacks in all of college football with Michael Penix Jr. So with him likely seeing the field for more plays next season, I expect him to put up some really solid numbers and potentially emerge as one of the sleeper wide receivers in the entire Pac-12. We started the video with USC, so we'll end with them as well. They added a really good player on defense in former Oklahoma State linebacker Mason Cobb. Cobb led all of Oklahoma State players this season with 96 tackles, including a team high 13 tackles for loss. He also posted 11 quarterback hurries, two sacks, one interception, and a forced fumble. Not only was he the best defensive player on Oklahoma State, he was one of the top defensive players in the entire Big 12. One of USC's biggest issues all season was their defense, as essentially nobody could tackle anyone. Now, I'm serious when I say this, but Mason Cobb might just be the best player on defense that USC has right now. So this is a pretty big addition for the Trojans. If USC is able to add a few more pieces on defense, Defense, this might be a team that's finally ready to compete for a national championship next year. Well, that wraps it up for today's video. Out of all the players in today's video, which one do you think is going to make the biggest impact at their new program in 2023? Whoever you think it is, let me know in the comment section down below. Before you leave, don't forget to smash that subscribe button and turn on those notifications if you're new to my channel. I'm posting college football videos all off season, so make sure to subscribe so you never miss a video. Also, don't forget to drop a like on this video as well. It helps out with that YouTube algorithm and helps share the video with more college football fans. Plus, it only takes a second to do. As always, thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you all in my next video.